All right, let's get back to our virtual town hall now, and we have been reporting how the data shows Western New York will not qualify to enter phase one of reopening by this Friday, but some companies are still reopening in the coming days and they're doing it legally, right? Here's the email question that got us looking into this. If Erie County and Western New York are not allowed to go back to work in phase one starting on the 15th, how is it that GM employees in Tonawanda and possibly elsewhere in Western New York are allowed to go back to work starting the 18th? Well, first off, it's true. The powertrain plant plans to reopen on Monday the 18th with a gradual ramp up of production. Now, GM does not need to wait until Western New York enters phase one because it's part of an essential industry, according to the governor's executive order. Yeah, we confirmed that today with Empire State Development. Basically, GM could have stayed open here in New York State all through this pandemic, but the company chose to shut down for health and other reasons. Uh, the plant is basically able to reopen whenever it chooses. GM's factory in Lockport actually resumed some operations last week. Now, you may also be wondering about the Ford plant in Hamburg. It will also partially reopen this coming Monday on the 18th, and we're seeing this happening across the country with the automakers and the unions working together on some protocols to try to keep workers safe as they return to the job. And I believe Hamburg, the Ford plant may mm -hmm. be reopening on fr it's either Friday or it's Monday, but they're opening soon too, because again, the auto industry declared essential here. That's right. And there are some construction industries too that are able to get back to work. So there are those exceptions that the governor made. And if it's deemed essential and you know, a lot of them have to submit special plans uh, for their industry to get back to work, then it's going to start happening. Yeah. And manufacturing for everybody, you know, we'll see when that goes back. Right. Well, we're going to turn now to that rare inflammatory syndrome that's affecting dozens of children across New York State and potentially hundreds nationwide. Now, thankfully, there are no confirmed cases here in Western New York. We're going to have an update from local doctors tonight at 11 o'clock, but doctors believe it is linked to COVID-19 and it causes symptoms similar to Kawasaki disease. It prompted somebody to send us this question asking what is that? So we did some research. Here's what you need to know about Kawasaki disease. It's a rare pediatric inflammatory condition that generally affects children five and under. It affects coronary arteries, which supply blood to the heart. Left untreated, Kawasaki disease can cause serious heart problems. The New York City Health Department has reported dozens of children ages 2 to 15 displaying Kawasaki-like symptoms and testing positive for COVID-19. This raises the possibility that the coronavirus may be a trigger for Kawasaki disease. See a doctor if your child has a fever for more than three days or has a fever and four or more of these symptoms. Redness in both eyes, a very red swollen tongue, redness of the palms or soles, skin peeling, a rash, and swollen lymph nodes. Receiving treatment within 10 days of getting the disease is key to reducing any long-term damage. And again, we know this is alarming for a lot of parents, so we are going to have a lot more on this and kind of what local doctors are saying tonight at 11 o'clock. Absolutely. It's so great, though, that, you know, we can give them that early heads up and check for those symptoms that, you know, a fever and the other ones are kind of nondescript. I don't know that you'd necessarily put it all together, but, you know, getting early one. treatment. Yeah. yeah, it's so very important. Yeah.